Howdy doody dooties. Well, it's another chance that this one's going to be a short one. I won't keep them real long because if you can't make your point in just a few minutes and let people get inspired enough to go out and do a little research and find out for themselves, we just ain't doing a good job. And I want to do a good job for you. Fact is, today I'm going to talk about karma. I'll tell you what inspired this. No, no uh, notice and nobody wrote me about it or anything, but two things have happened. One, I saw a bumper sticker on a car the other day, and it said, My karma has run over your dogma. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. But the other one is that over on taunt.org, that's a template of new thought, they've started a new thing, and they call it Instant Karma Repair. And it made a lot of sense to me, and I looked over their program on it, and I was quite impressed. And I want to share that with you, but before I do... I think we ought to talk a little about what karma is and isn't. First of all, it's not tit for tat, meaning that it's not an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and all that stuff. What it is, is it's the working of the law of cause and effect. Now, let me explain a little bit about cause and effect. Science says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's on the physical level. That's not always on the mental level or the emotional level. I wish it was because it makes things a lot more simple, but it doesn't work that way. You know, we live and we grow by experience and our reactions to the experience, how we handle it. The idea is that to be more godlike, and that's the whole thing that uh, Jesus taught, he kept saying, you know, You've got to work from the Father within. You've got to let it pour out. And what he was talking about was love. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little later about the fear of God. <laughs> and that'll be next week. But I'll tell you something. In nowhere in the Bible does it ever say the fear of God. Man has put that in, and I'll tell you how they did it next week. Anyway, back to karma, because it is important. We live by experience. So if in this life, for instance, and, and some people say, well, does that only apply to reincarnation? Doesn't matter. What matters is you're living now. You're in the now. This is the life that counts. So if you do something in this life that you feel really guilty and bad about and horrible, or maybe you don't, and maybe you just know it was wrong, but you feel it was a right or wrong, you had every right in the world to do it, uh, that's, that's still karmic, meaning that this is what karma is. It's the working of the law. How long is it going to take? Well, that's what karma means. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take, and it doesn't matter how it's done. In fact, is if you're looking for vengeance, you're going to be in serial trouble because you're creating some new karma. You don't want to do that. You want it to just work out. After all, it said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And there again, that's the wrong interpretation. It's not vengeance. It's balanced retribution. No, no retribution. It's correction. Correct that mistake. And, and go on, as Jesus put it, go and sin no more. Meaning, go and don't do the same mistake. Try to find some new ones. <laughs> and that's probably the best thing and the best advice anybody ever gave anybody. But I'm telling you right now, you live by experience. That's what makes you grow spiritually. Now, you don't have to experience all experiences. And we'll get into that a little later, too. You can do some by observation and some by illumination. And, and there's different ways to get that experience down your, your throat and into your heart. And I'm telling you right now, karma is a good thing if it's worked right. So if you're burdened with something that really bothers you, you think that somebody did a wrong to you or you've done a wrong to them or you said something, did something, imagined something, saw something, you better get onto that taunt program and, and correct it and repair it. <laughs> That's an easy thing to do. Hey, remember this. Don't be a coward and shrink from new thought. It's all good. You can make up your mind whether it's right or wrong. And don't be so lazy that you're satisfied with a half-truth. Hey, a half-truth, and there's a lot of those going around right now, especially in politics. Put a little bit of the truth out and hide a whole lot more of it, and then you got a half-truth. 
Don't be lazy. Don't, don't, don't be satisfied with that in any way, shape, or form. And last of all, don't get the idea that you know everything, that you know all truth. Now, don't be that arrogant. There's a lot to learn for all of us, especially the old fat boy sitting in front of you right now. God bless you. I'm looking forward to talking to you next week.